me as, as bad possible. You can hear me as best as possible. So my husband, you guys probably know him from the group, Stephen Pina. He's over there, that way over yonder on the camera. And so he's helped kind of moderating. So if you have questions, just pop up and he'll kind of, he'll kind of pop over to me and let me know. Um, I am recording on my phone, which is in front of me, kind of mounted, so that again, you all can see me the best, um, the best for your workout. So let's get started. So lower body mobility, um, super, super important for kickboxers. I kick on three knee surgeries, not necessarily because of kickboxing, um, but three knee surgeries in my life, both knees. All right, one is three sixteen months ago, sixteen months ago, something like eighteen. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Recently, so. Uh, knee health has become super important to me. I like to put them down. I like to lift heavy. I like to kick people, um, particularly down. So in order to do that, I need to, to make sure that my lower body mechanics are good. So I'm going to talk about a few things as we get right in there. I want to Stephen already. Um, and I'll explain the intent behind mobility and the importance of lower body mechanics as we go through our warm up. So this is one of my favorite warm ups, and I have it written on the board behind me too. So people who who this or whatever it is, but this is a, a warm up that I do. Um, and I have all my athletes do this very similar workout too. So it's called the bulldog work. Circuit is number one. There's actually four different moves on Leanne. Um, so we're going to go through that, get them nice and warm. So um, I'm going to turn to the side at first. So literally, think of like a bulldog, right? So I'm like a, like a dog right now. So you just want to make sure that your hips stay square. So don't drop one hip. So all we're going to do, everybody should be on all fours right now. And we're just going to bring our right leg out like a fire hydrant. So five times. So one, three, four, five. And then switch to the left side. So fire hydrant. One, two, three, four, five. Good. So the next one, we come back to the right side. So now we're going to bring, we're going to come out into our fire hydrant and then and reset. That's one, two, three. Our opposite hip. Squeeze that belly. Keep your hip square. So other side nine. So fire hydrant out, and then heel to the sky. Reset. So two, three, four, five. All right. Now we're gonna do the opposite. So now we're gonna start with our heel to the sky, and then we're gonna bring our knee to our elbow and back in. That's one. Heel to knee to elbow. So essentially, we're making hip circles. If anybody has a knee injury, other side now, where it actually hurts to kneel, you can do this entire circuit from a bullfrog position. So instead of being on your knees, in quadruped this is called, instead you would just be on your back. All right. So for example, my brother, big runner, tore his patella tendon. He can't kneel. So he does this exact warm up on his back. All right, and then the last movement, you're gonna bring your leg out straight and you're just gonna bring your leg to the sky. One, two, three, four, five. Other side. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so that's warm up one. I usually go three times today um, for the first. Please don't worry, we're not doing a full burpee, but it's a great warm up for leg day. So you come into that nice plank and you're going to just jump forward like you're a catcher in baseball. So you jump, you hands back down to the ground and out. So two, three, four. So get what I say, 15. So get 15 of them. Good, five more. Good. 
Good. So at that, your butt should start to feel really warm. And nice. All right, let me just move this microphone. Jump squats, which won't require any weights. Okay, can I take this off? So, technical difficulties. So, jump squats. Then we're going to go into um, some hamstring stuff. RDLs are called, or Romanian deadlifts. And then from there, we're going to go into working kind of the inner part of our legs. Which, speaking of hip flexor, by the way, um, I have absolutely horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible hip flexors. So this one's really good for us. And then we'll do some more kind of cardio plyometrics. So as heavy as possible is what we say for this. If at any point you need to drop the weight or if you don't have weight, not even a big problem. What we're gonna work on is time under tension. So what that means is we're going up and down at very specific counts. So the first one is gonna be a front squat or just a dumbbell squat or kettlebell squat. You can hold it this way or you can hold it this way. I don't really care. Um, I don't have preference, but for the purposes of today, I'm gonna hold it like this. So, couple things is, you can see my keywords back here. You probably can't actually, I have terrible eyes, so I don't know why I think you could read that. But a couple things I wanna talk about real quick while you all are getting your weights. So number one, glutes engaged at all times. So a lot of us as kickboxers, runners, kickboxers, we tend to have knee pain or hip pain um, because we're not engaging our glutes enough. So today, what I want you to think about is, I love to say this, but you're next to like some hot chick or some hot, chick, uh, hot dude, and you're trying not to fart. I don't know, maybe you want to, but you try not to, right? Squeeze your butt super, super hard so you don't have to fart out. That is what you're doing the entire time for every exercise tonight. Number two, think about a dog in trouble, right? So a lot of people, they think that when they're doing a squat, they, they wanna kind of do this, but what you wanna think about is a dog in trouble, and they tuck their tail, all right? So you actually bring your hips through and you tuck that tail. So the low of your back is really flat, which then forces your belly to engage, 
and forces you to squeeze those glutes. So that's the second thing I want you to focus on. The third thing, and perhaps the most important, is your knee alignment. A lot of people think your knees should never slide forward. That's actually not true. You want your knees to slide forward a little bit, but you don't want to jut them forward so that your heels come off the ground. So everybody, everybody's body is different. Try not to toe out or toe in. Just simply remember to keep the outside part of your knee in line with the outside part of your ankle. So for a proper squat, your knees actually should come forward a little bit. All right, so my chest slides forward, my tail is tucked, my knees slide forward, but everything's controlled and the outer part of my knee is in line with the outer part of my ankle, okay? So let's get into it. So everybody should have your weight by now. So like I said, we're gonna work on time under tension. So this is gonna be a three count down with a two count hold at the bottom. So this is where it'll be challenging even if you have, don't have a weight, so don't worry about it. Uh, if you have like a small child or a dog and you don't have a weight, that'll do too. But if you, have, if you don't have anything, that's all right. So just about hip, hip width apart. Squeeze the glutes like you're trying at the fart. Tuck that tail like you're a dog in trouble. And then we're just gonna come down for a three count. We're gonna do 15 of these. All right, so one, two, three, hold for two at the bottom and then come back up. And we're gonna do it again. One, two, three, hold for two at the bottom, come back up. Keep on going. When you're coming down, really control, hold for two. And when you come up, make sure that you lead with your chest first, okay? So the countdown is really where you have to enact that control. So if you notice, I sit nice and low into my squat. You can stop right at that 90 degree angle too. All right, so whatever's comfortable, but definitely come down to 90 degrees. All right, looking somewhere ahead of you, making sure those knees shift forward, that chest shifts forward, but your belly and your back are tight the whole time. Good. So as I'm talking, I'm gonna be terrible with counting. So just make sure you hit that 15. We're about five away, so I'm gonna do five more. Make sure one, two, three, hold for two. Good. One, two, three, hold for two. Back up. Three more. One, two, three. Good, don't let those knees fall in. So for me, with my left knee surgery pretty recently, sometimes my left knee wants to fall in. Really focus on that knee alignment, keeping the outside of that knee in line with the outside of the ankle. So that should have been 15. If my count's ever way off, yell at me on the comments and Steven will let me know. Okay, so that was set one, shake it out. If you need more weight, get more weight. If you need less weight, get less weight. If you need to drop the weight, drop the weight. If you're finishing, and again, admittedly my count suck, I'm really sorry about that. But if you're finishing way behind or way before me, you need to try to get in line with what's called the tempo count because you really want that time under tension, especially if you don't have very heavy weight for your legs right now. So remember your legs, you can hold more weight. I have a 15, um, just so I'm not so winded when I'm speaking and trying to, to, to coach you all, but the heavier the better, all right? If your grip strength, grip strength is getting tired, just hold it like I am. So almost rack it just like if you had a barbell for a front squat, those of you who are comfortable with that. All right, let's get into our next set. So we have two more sets like this. Remember, hip width apart. We're gonna keep our tail tucked like a puppy in trouble, belly tight. We're gonna make sure our knees slide forward, our chest slide forwards, and the outside of our knee stays in line with the outside of our ankle, all right? Down for three, hold for two, up, and then hit it again, 15 times. So stay with my count for the tempo. Like I said, if I'm off by like 14, 16, whatever, let me know. All right, so one, two, three, hold two, up. Make sure you drive through those hips, keep the good alignment, All right, one, two, three, and up. 
one, two, three, and up. So this is important, again, for us kickboxers, because the more that our lower body mobility and mechanics are in order, not only are we gonna be more efficient kickboxers, so we're gonna be stronger and faster, but we're also gonna be less likely to get injured, which is really the goal. A lot of us during that quarantine or during what might become quarantine again, or I guess is right now, it can be easy to fall into bad habits. But if you do this exercise that I'm showing you right here, or any variation of it, even two or three times a week, you'll feel a big difference in your mobility. So the reason I sit so low into my squat, it's not because I'm hyper flexible, but because it's something that I work often. Because that's what feels good for me. So Donna was talking about how, you know, her hips hurt if she doesn't kickbox often. And that's because quite literally, she's lubricating her hips when she's working, right? All of us are. So we got about three more left. Probably way off, sorry about that. Good, make sure we're getting that two count at the bottom. One, two, three, hold two. Last one. One, two, three, hold two, and up. Good. So when I do a tempo count like that for my squats, or time under tension, people call it different things, my posterior chain gets tired too. And that's because I'm really utilizing it to stabilize. Because even though I'm only holding 15 pounds, it's still pulling me forward. So I actually saw Lori post about this earlier, about you know the kickbox your muscle. So Lori, when you watch this, you can chime in. But you know that's all part of this, really your scap, but which leads into your lat and everything that comes on down. That is constantly stabilizing you. So doing squats, even though this is really good for your lower body mechanics, it's also gonna help you as a whole as a kickboxer. So keep that in mind. All right, last set of these. All right, so I'm sweating. So you should be sweating just from the warm up and from these time under tensions, okay? So last set, keep your count good. Remember, toes forward. I don't want you toeing out. I don't want you toeing in. Adjust in or adjust out. So what I'm saying is adjust your, your width of your stance rather than toe in or out, all right? And then remember, your knees can shift forward and your chest should shift forward, but keep your tail tucked, your glutes tight, your belly engaged. All right, let's hit it. One, two, three, hold two, up. Good, that's one. One, two, three, hold two, up. Make sure we leave with that chest. One, two, three, hold two, up with the chest. One, two, three, hold two. There we go. Steven, are you counting for me? Not at all, he says. I think this is five. So if you notice, you might not up because you might be slowly dying too, which I'm not sorry about. But sometimes you'll actually, actually see me lift to the right a little because my left side is still weak. So figure out kind of what your insufficiencies are and then, and then just bring awareness to them because it'll help you figure out how to strengthen. And sometimes it's not some specific exercise that you have to do to fix it, but simply bringing the awareness to that insufficiency will significantly help you. So I don't know about you all, either I'm deeply, deeply deconditioned or these time under tension squats are really getting to me. All right, we got about four more. Right there, I just listed again. Really what I'm saying is I'm, pu I'm pushing up more with my right leg, all right? So for me, I'm just trying to bring some awareness to that left leg to make sure that I'm driving up through both legs. Two more, one, two, three, hold two, and up, last one. One, 
two, three, hold two, and up. Good. So get a quick sip of water, because we're about to do, don't chug, we're about to do jump squats. So you don't want a bunch of uh, water sloshing around in the belly. Although I guess no one's around in theory, so you could throw up and no one would make fun of you. So whatever feels good for you, you do you. So we have three sets of jump squats for 20 seconds. What's really important about the jump squats is, again, mechanics. So when we land, we wanna make sure our butt comes immediately back and our outside of our knee stays in line with the outside of our ankle. So that's a huge key word or key phrase is allowing the outside of your knee to stay in line with the outside of your ankle. Additionally, when you land, you wanna let your knee slide forward and your butt slide back at the same time. The other thing that's super important is when you're in the air for a jump squat, it doesn't matter how much air you get, it just matters that your leg completely straightens in the air. So a lot of people will try to jump squat and they'll just do this and their knees stay bent, but that's not helping your mechanics. And when we kick, right, we want that full extension of our knee. It's that last little opening or that last bit of extension that actually helps us with that pop or that snap when we're kicking. It also allows our stabilizing leg to stabilize. So if we can't properly extend and flex, we can't kickbox safely or efficiently. So the jump squat's really important because you're making sure you get that full flexion and that full extension, all right? So I just talked long enough to give us a break, so you're welcome. Um, and I'm gonna do my best with the timing here. I realize I didn't start anything because my phone's right there. All right, so jump squats for 20 seconds, starting now. Go ahead. So you don't have to be getting a lot of air. Just make sure your legs are actually straightening in the air, all right? So I'm bringing my stance in a little bit because I could feel myself caving in. So I corrected my stance. So don't toe out or toe in. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Make sure that you just correct your stance. Good, rest. Sorry, I had to, had to break to talk. So I was starting to fall in because I was so wide. So I corrected my stance this way. All right. So if you feel your knees doing funny things, don't correct by towing. I know a lot of us do that. Correct instead by stepping wider or more narrow. All right, we're gonna hit it again in three, two, one. Good, so remember, straight knees in the air, butt back on the landing. Good job. Get those arms going, keep that breath. My legs are burning. In three, two, one. Good. I'm actually really glad I took up the microphone because my breathing is ridiculous right now. Any comments or anything, Steven? Okay. All right. And we're going to hit it again in five, four, three, two, one. Good. Straight legs in the air, butt back, soft landing on the down. There you go, keep your breathing up. Good. Three, two, one. Good job, get some water. Good, all right, I'm dying. All right, so get some water, and we're gonna pick up our heaviest weight again. So this one is an RDL or a Romanian deadlift. So don't be afraid to go really heavy. You can even grab two of your heaviest dumbbells. All right. Dude, I swear I work out every day. We're talking to you all and working out brings a whole new level. And now understand 
some of Donna's language. All right, so we're gonna tempo it again. So this time it's a 50-30, so five down, three up. 15, RDLs three times, all right? So what's important about an RDL or a Romanian deadlift is you're actually not moving your legs. Once you get them frozen in the proper spot. So you don't want to lock out your knees like this. You put a lot of pressure on your knees and we're trying to protect our knees. So instead what you want to do is make sure that you put just a slight bend in your knee. And you're close, so you're not wide for this at all. So I'm, I'm just under my hips, maybe a little bit even, even closer. Again, adjust your stance. Don't toe out or toe in if your hips or your knees feel funny. If your hips or your knees feel funny, remember those key phrases. Tuck your tail like a dog in trouble. So what that looks like from the side, tuck. Squeeze your butt like you're trying not to fart in public. All right? And then the last thing is look at your knee alignment. If your knees are falling in, kind of rotate them out so that the outside of your knee stays aligned with the outside of your ankle. That should correct any weirdness, technical term, yep, but that should correct anything kind of funky in your hips or your knees. Unless there's like a real issue going on, which then you should probably go see a doctor. All right, so slight bend in your knees, narrow stance. So here's where I start, right? I tuck my tail, squeeze my butt. Now I put a slight bend in those knees, all right? And now we're gonna five count down as we push our butt back. Nice flat back and three count up. So my arms are just meat hooks, as my husband says. Hold those weights however is comfortable. So slight bend in those knees. Two, one, one, two, three. And again. So your back should be nice and flat the whole time. And you should be nice and controlled. So you're not going down slow and flying back up. You're going down for five. Three, two, one, and then up for one, two, three. I, by the end of this first set, will end up almost to the tops of my ankles. Everybody's flexibility is different. So if you're stopping just below your knees or right around your knees, that's okay as long as your back is flat, your butt is tight, your toes are forward, and the only thing you're using to move are your hips. Good, a couple more. I'm gonna face towards you. So if you can hear a cute girl in the background, Ella thinks I'm training her Uncle Mike. She doesn't know that I'm training all of you all. Donna's on the other side of the camera, baby girl. So we got about five more. Make sure you get that nice five count down. So now you can see I'm reaching to just about my ankles. But my first couple, I was at mid shin. Nice flat back the whole time. And make sure that you're protecting that neck. So your gaze should be, you know, six feet out in front of you. If your low back is getting tired, that is completely normal because you are using your rector muscles, your posterior chain, which leads into your hamstrings. Last one right here. Good, drop it and rest. So, hold on, EJ. So, your rectors are here, they're your stabilizer. So they're right opposite your core. So again, don't mind me, this is really pretty. All right, sorry, head away. So again, super important for kickboxers, right? You know, when we're twitting, when we're punching, we're using that for rotation, right? When we're kicking, same thing. You know, if someone hits us, we need to protect those rectors. Your core, super important. So RDLs are really good. They're also targeting your hamstring and your glutes, which is, if the front of your legs are really strong, which they often are, um, for kickboxers or people who use their legs a lot, but the back of our legs aren't as strong, that also starts to pull at our knees. So working our hamstrings and our quads, the back of our legs and the front of our legs, is super important for that knee health, okay? A lot of time, 
people start to have these kind of like little wonky issues that pop up in their knees and they can be corrected by some stretching and some strengthening intentionally. So that's what we're doing here today. All right, again, I talked for your listening pleasure to allow you to rest. Let's get into our next step. Tuck the tail, squeeze the butt, nice tight belly, shoulders back. Slight bend in the knee and come on down for that five count. Up for three. So I widened my stance a little without thinking about it. And I could totally feel a huge difference in what part of my leg I was just targeting. No pain or anything, but I could feel a different part of my hamstring. So that's another thing. We're doing three sets. Play around a little. Make sure your form is safe. But do one a little wide, one a little narrow, and one somewhere in between. And then notice how it feels different. I'm a big nerd. That's cool to me. If it's not cool to me, it's cool to you. You can just say whatever, Carly. Just appease me. Good. We got about five, about ten more. Notice that I've started to say about. You know, just trying to maintain some credibility. Make sure we are getting that five count down. Looking out ahead, three count up. Our arms are not moving at all. This is not an exercise that should challenge your grip strength. If it is, adjust how you're holding the weight and then bring some awareness to your form. Because really you should be challenging and targeting your low back muscles, not your spine, your butt and your hamstring. All right, keep those shoulders locked back. And we've got three more. But I like to do this with a barbell. But I really like to do this with one dumbbell if I'm using a dumbbell so I can control my grip strength. There are days that I focus on my grip strength. Today's not one of those days. So give it a rest because your wrist take a beat in kickboxing. Good rest. Mommy. Yes, Elgin. Um, I did everything me. Okay. And um, sorry, I wanted to stay down here. That's fine. Just be quiet. All right, good. So take that little quick rest, Mommy, um, and let's hit it again so we can get into some of our fun stuff. I know you're really excited. You're thinking like, oh my god, this wasn't already fun. Um, all right, sorry, the cute four girls over here distracting me again. All right, so knees slightly bent. Tuck the tail, tighten the belly, tighten the butt, shoulders back, and let's hit. So you got five down, three up. On the way down, I want you to think about a nice breath in through your nose. And then a breath out. So now I'm pretty much touching my toes every time. My flexibility really increases without fail. Every time I do this exercise, by the third set, I'm like completely stretched out, nice and, and nimble. Feel like I can kick my husband in the face. He's like six, 100. Good. There you go, keep that five count down. Three count up. So as my back fatigues, I have a tendency, number one, for my right knee to fall in and me to loosen my belly, which puts a really dangerous arch in my low back. So if you were in that boat, which you probably are, because these are a lot of time under tension, make sure that you're just bringing some awareness to it. All right, we got two more. Might be five more, I don't know. Just make sure you hit 15. Three, two, good. Up for three, and one more. Five, four, three, two, one, one, two, three. Good, drop that weight. All right, good, so shake it out. So now we're gonna go into Cossack squats or Cossack squats, people call them different, say, say it differently. I'm genuinely unsure which one it is, but what I do know is it's really good for hip flexors. So if you haven't done these before, I suggest doing your first set without a weight, especially those of you who have cranky hip flexors. Um, I was actually discussing with Steven earlier how I remember at Titans, there's like 
17 of us who were like, oh, my hip flexor. And it's probably because we're like working out for eight hours, right? But also just because, you know, we're constantly, you know, pivoting. I don't want to do it in these shoes. Um, and just putting a lot of pressure on one side of our hips. They're going to one hip. So it's important for us to make sure that we're bringing mobility to both equally so we stabilize and we're less likely to get injured and then we kick people harder, which is the real goal. So Cossack squats. So really what they are is they're a side lunge, but you come super deep, but make sure that knee stays in line with the ankle and then you actually don't stand up. You just come right over to the left side. So if you notice, on the right side, I can come down really far. But on this left side, I can't come down as far. Like it physically stops me because my right hip flexor is completely jacked. So wherever you find yourself, just honor it. Like don't, don't think, oh, I got I to gotta force myself down further. Don't do that because you're already in a stressed position. So just moving through this position fluidly, as smoothly as you can, will help increase your mobility. You don't need to force anything, all right? So first set, I'm gonna do my first set without weight. And like I said, I have a very, very cranky right hip flexor, which by the way is why I had knee surgery number two. So make sure that you're just honoring your body here. These ones are challenging. So we're just gonna do 10 on each side. So it's actually a count of 20 total. Did we lose all the audio? Okay. So. Get as wide as you want. Again, don't toe in or out. So adjust your hip width or your stance width rather than adjusting your hip or your toes coming in or out. All right, so let's hit it. So one, two, keep that chest up as much as possible. Three, four, five. I like to just put my hand down so I kind of know where I am. Four, three, Two, definitely ending on the wrong side. Let's get both sides for even. Good. Oh, wait, no. There you go. There you go. I'll get my counts down eventually. Good. So if that felt okay, add the weight. I actually like to do these in my vest, my weighted vest. So those of you who have a weighted vest at home, super duper fun. You can also get them on Amazon, fairly inexpensive. Um, I was fortunate. Steven's best friend is a cop. So he gave me an extra vest that he had. So not only is it weighted, but I can like, no, it's not a cop one though. It's one from that he bought. What is it? Now he's yelling at me. It's not like an actual one. Don't worry, chill out. But um, anyway, so not only, not only um, is it cool, it's like 17 pounds. So, but, um, but I, I also feel like a badass. So those of you like look on Amazon, my aunt just bought one. Super cool. Um, also fun for doing some sprints and stuff. But this is a great exercise to throw a weight on so you don't have to worry about holding the weight. So. When you do the classic squat with the weight, you can hold it like this or um, here. I prefer to hold it at my chest, all right? So let's hit it again. So again, don't throw it in or out, chest up. So one, two, three, try to keep those feet on the ground. Mine came up four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. Good. Drop that weight. Come up carefully. Remember, you don't want to force anything. So, especially when I'm holding the weight, I try not to like bounce out of that stance, okay? Because it's already a really stressed position. So, um, you know, depending on how you're feeling after set number two, again, either drop the weight, add the weight, or adjust your stance. Just be careful because it's already, like I said, a stressed position. All right, let's get the last one. And then we're going to get into two um cardio bursts kind of going along with our mobility then i'll show you two good stretches and we'll be all done okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all right so what do we, we need to wrap it up no? Okay. All right, good. So you can drop your weight, get it out of the way. You don't need it anymore. So the next one is um, drop squats. So drop squats are here. You started a quarter squat, 
and then you come into a wide squat and drop your butt and then come back into the quarter squat. So at no point do you stand fully up. Soccer runs, similar to high knees, except it's like you're trying to juggle a soccer ball. So you're bringing the insides of your feet up. So what that's targeting is that, that inner part of your leg again, okay? So, well, let's do each one two times for 20 seconds and then we'll be done. So you got, what is that, times three or times four, right? So 160 seconds of work, all right? I do one of these, you can, you can walk. So if you're really hurting, step, step, okay? And then for the soccer runs, just pump those arms if you need to, all right? So we're gonna hit this in about two seconds and go, drop squats. All right, so remember, you do you. If you need to walk it, walk it, okay? The drop squats, when you're in the wide stance, try to get your butt low, okay? Good. Three, two, one, good. And we're gonna hit it again for soccer runs in three, two, go. All right, so keep that chest up. Again, if you're tired, you can bring it more to a march. Sorry about the bulldog in the background, right? Or you can run it. Good. Three, two, one, good. Two more sets. Then I'll show you two quick stretches for mobility, and we're done. Good, we're gonna hit it again in five, four, three, two, one, drop squats. Good. Remember, don't ever stand up fully. This is different than the jump squats in the beginning. We wanna stay in a variation of a squat at all times. Three, two, one. Good. We're gonna do our soccer run. One more time, and then we're gonna stretch it out. My Fitbit's yelling at me. All right, ready, go. Good job. Try to speed it up if you can. Good job, good job. Three, two, one, good. All right, get the water. Come on down to the ground. All right. <laughs> Again, if you have a knee issue, kneel on a towel or something. So, kneel on one knee, other leg in front of you. I'm sure you've been, done this, whoops. But think about squeezing the glute of the kneeling knee. So squeeze it, and now right at that hip flexor, you're just pushing down to the ground with the hip, 30 degree angle. If you feel like you can, bring that arm up. So like I said, this is my hip, it sucks. So this one, I really try to make sure I, I give a lot of love to. 20 seconds on each side twice after a class will change your world, I swear to God. All right, so again, squeeze that left glute now or whatever leg you're on. Bring that hip flexor slightly down and forward. Good, bring it up, that arm. Good, switch sides one more time. Good, squeeze that right glute. Bring that hip forward. You'll see a lot of people try to do this stretch and like arch back. You're just putting way too much pressure in, in, in places that don't need to have that stress on them. So if you squeeze your right glute, and you push that hip forward and down just a little, it will do what it needs to do. And then bringing that arm up will get that outside of the hip as well. Good, get that left side one more time. We're gonna do pigeon. I know you guys work with April with yoga sometimes, so I know you all know pigeon. My IT suck, my hip flexors suck. Everything about my hips suck. So I try to do these two every day no matter what. All right, good. All right, so pigeon. So my pigeon's pathetic. If you have a yoga block or something, get it, or, you know, or something close, you can use a weight. I, I wouldn't recommend that, it would feel good. Right, so we're gonna do our right leg. So I'm gonna bring my right ankle to my left hand, bring that left knee down, 
and kind of scooch it out, technical terms, scooch the way it feels good. And then if you can, bring those forearms, chest, head, whatever you can to the ground. I can't get very far down, but it does really do the trick for me, the stretch in general. So wherever your mobility's at, this stretch will help you significantly. We work the inside, the outside, the front and back of our legs today. So we wanna make sure we're stretching, stretching kind of all around in that 360 degree view as well. All right, let's do that left side real quick. So bring the left ankle to the right wrist. So this side feels worse, but I have a lot more mobility. The body can be tricky. All right. Good, and again, two times for 20 seconds on each side. You know, once a week is good, twice a week is better. Let's switch legs. Three times a week is best. All right, last time on this side, right ankle to left wrist. All right, come down to where it's comfortable. Second time around, you should be a little bit more mobile. And good, switch sides. Left. Ankle to right wrist. Good. Anyone who can get their chest or head to the ground on this, I want to be like you. Good. All right. So that's it. So again, the, the key takeaway here is try to do this type of workout two to three times a week. You can abbreviate this and do it for 30 seconds. Um, I'll type it up and put it in the group too. But doing this with those good knee mechanics, making sure the outside of your knee is in line with the outside of your ankle, and then make sure you're making sure you're stretching. You should feel a big difference in, in not only your power kickboxing and your, your strength and your endurance kickboxing, but you, those of you who do have cranky hips or cranky knees, you should start to feel a big difference within a couple of weeks if you're doing this consistently, right? So one time a week is good. Twice is better, three or more is best. All right, again, I'll type it in the group. Um, Donna, thanks for having me. Sorry about the technical difficulties in the beginning. Everybody, this is Ella June. She'll be a master kickboxer someday. You gotta be a Titan. Yeah. All right. Hey, well, everybody. Good job, friends. Everybody, make sure you drink a lot of water, put some protein in you within 30 minutes, um, and hit me up with any questions or Steven um, with any questions. Thank you, hey, everybody. Carly, we just want to